Hello, in this video I'm going to show you how to use Excel to work out problems on kinetics. Particularly we're looking at problem 27 in chapter 14. Um, these kind of problems are always going to contain a column with different times and another column with concentrations corresponding to those times. Um, the main idea is that we have to perform certain tests and see if the data, the way that we're processing the data, fits a linear equation. Um, remember we have um, integrated rate laws for zero, first, second order. You have to remember those equations. But the one thing that we're going to do is that those integrated rate law equations are going to be put on the form of a linear equation. Now we're going to perform this test. We don't know exactly if this reaction follows a zero, first, or second order. So we're going to go and do this different test and see which one has a better fit, uh, a better correlation. So let's see, uh, let's go with the first test, zero order. So according to this equation, for the zero order, you have to go and test how the concentration changes with respect to time. And if plotting concentration and time together gives you a linear relationship, then we can conclude that the reaction follows a zero order. So we already have concentration and time. Let's go click time and concentration together. Uh, go to insert, uh, select chart or plot. Uh, click on this one that it's x, y scatter. Select the first one so we don't connect the dots. And now we're going to have this particular chart. So it looks like it's decreasing. It seems a linear bent to me, but instead of guessing, or just by looking at, uh, you know, inspecting by eye, what we're going to use is this tool that we know as linear regression. So for that, uh, we're going to click on the data. Now all the points, you can see that all the points were selected. Go right click on one of the data points. You have this menu now. Go and click on add a trend line, which is basically the linear relationship. Now you will see that there is this new menu and now automatically selects linear. There are many other different fitting functions, but for now we know that all our data should fit a linear equation. So we click on linear. It seems like it's not a very good correlation. Some of the points are off the line and actually just uh, out of curiosity, click on exponential and now look at how the data fits much better to an exponential function rather than a linear function. So that means that this is not necessarily very good for a linear fitting. So now again, um, the linear fitting seems okay, but the exponential fitting actually looks much better. So let's not guess. Let's go with actual numbers. For that, what we have is these two options at the end of this menu. Display the equation of the fitting that we're using, in this case the linear fitting, and also display R square value on the chart. This R square value is basically going to tell you how good the correlation between your data is. Okay, if R square is equal to 1, then that means that it's a perfect correlation and then your data actually correlates with the model that you're putting in. In this case, the model will be the linear equation. Okay. Now, look at if we select linear, the R square, it's very close to 1. So we, we will be tempted to say, yeah, it's actually a good correlation. But look what happens if you select now an exponential fitting. You see what happens with this R square? It became 1. So that means really the exponential fitting is much better for this data than the linear fitting is. So now we're suspicious about whether this data corresponds to actually a zero order reaction. So let's move on to the second test to verify that. So now the second test will be uh, testing for first order reaction. For that, first of the reaction, the equation is plotting the natural log of the concentration versus the time. So we don't have that, but we can actually create an additional column where now we're going to look at the natural log of the concentration for this particular substance. We do that in Excel. You type equal, then the natural log is going to be ln. You see this menu, you can click on that. Now it's asking you to what value you want to calculate it on. 
So click on this one cell, enter. Now you get this value. Uh, go to this corner of the cell, click and drag, and now it's copying the same function and it's actually taking out the lot the natural log of this one column b5 okay this one cell b5 and so on for all the data so now what we have to do is to go and plot the time versus now the log of the concentration same thing we go to insert chart scatter and now we have this data. It looks a little bit more linear, so we're going to do the test of the linear fitting. So for that, we're going to use the regression model. Again, remember, you click on the data. Now the data is selected. You can see that this is highlighted. Click on one of the points. You get right click on one of the points. Then you get this menu. Go to add a trend line. Now you're going to see the different trend lines with the different models. So now you have a linear, and now you can see that this exponential fitting is not even highlighted because now the software says, hey, you know, if anything, it could be any other function, but it's not an exponential because clearly it's not. It's more linear, or you can play around and see other models, but definitely not exponential. So this one seems more linear. You can see on the line all the dots or the points the data points actually fall uh, right on the spot above the line so let's not guess let's again go to the bottom of this venue I click display the equation and then display the r square value now look at this r square value beautifully equal to one so now this means that these data fits much better to a linear uh, equation, okay, this linear fitting. Now, if that is true, then this means that the model, or sorry, our data actually follows a first order reaction equation, okay? So for the sake of the argument and for this one tutorial, we're going to go ahead and move on to do the third test which is going to be uh, calculating for the second order, the test for the second order, and that is telling us we have to plot now the inverse of the concentration with respect to time. We don't have that, but we can now create an additional column where now we calculate the inverse of the concentration of this substance. Uh, now what we're going to do in Excel, uh, on this one cell, click equal 1 over the value of this one cell which is the concentration click enter now you get the value uh, so I'll go to the corner click and drag now you copy the function such that now you have the data in all of the different cells now what we're gonna do is plot time versus the inverse of the concentration uh, insert chart scatter XY we now look at this it doesn't look very linear let's analyze this with the linear fitting and for that we again click on the data the data gets highlighted selected uh, right click on one of the points go to add a trend line uh, now you see this menu now you see again that the exponential fitting comes up again so it, you're able to select it again because now the data doesn't seem too linear so the possibility of being exponential now it's there um, actually let's go ahead and click on that one look at how the fitting gets much better linear a little off exponential much better again remember we don't guess we go and actually look at the numbers, the values for the equation, and the value for the R square for this particular fitting. Um, now you can see again that it's not necessarily that great because now it's not equal to one. It is close to one, but in these model problems, you're always expecting this R square value to be 
really, really either one or very close to one, like 0 0.999, something around those lines. Okay, so that means that this is not necessarily a good fitting to a linear equation. If you click on exponential, you see what happened with r square now it became one so it's much better if you do a linear fitting an exponential fitting for this data than if you do a linear so that means the conclusion for that is that neither the zero order model or the second order model actually works for our data the one that works is uh, this one for first order so the reaction follows a first order react. The reaction is actually a first order. Okay. So now there are some other things that you can do and play around with the format of this plot. So actually it looks uh, nice. You remember have to label the axis. This one is the natural log of the concentration versus time. And also one of the things that are going to be important is uh, the values of the slope, since the value of the slope is actually minus the rate constant. So we're gonna go ahead and click some uh, some other parts of this menu where we can actually go and check. Um, now this number category we don't want it to be general let's do it either a number where we now can select how many decimal places you want or in some cases if the numbers are really small let's choose scientific and now you can see that you can still select scientific and then you can put some other number of decimal points. 